Good evening, everyone. The executive session of the Wayne Board of Education regular meeting of April 27, 2023 was convened in the media center of Anthony Wayne Middle School, 201 Garside Ave in Wayne. Statement of compliance setting forth date, time, location was read in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act. A roll call was taken and the meeting is now being re uh, was recessed and is now being reconvened. I ask everyone to please stand for the flag salute followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Superintendent's report. Um, good evening, everyone. Dr. Toback is attending a conference this evening and will not be joining us. This week, we celebrated Administrative Professionals Day. Administrative Professionals Day recognizes and celebrates the work of secretaries, administrative assistants, and other professionals for their contributions to the workplace. We're so grateful for administrative professionals and their ongoing dedication and commitment to our schools, students, and staff. Today was Take Your Child to Work Day. It was so nice to bring this amazing tradition back in our schools. Many of our staff members brought their children to work and they were engaged by our staff in exciting activities and they thoroughly enjoyed meeting our therapy dogs. There were many Earth Day celebrations around the district this week. I'm excited to highlight a few. CBS News anchor John Elliott visited third grade students at James Fallon Elementary School. Mr. Elliott did a special weather presentation um, and a lesson on Earth Day. He taught the students about weather tools, patterns, and what to do if caught in, in severe weather conditions. Students were able to visit the CBS News Mobile Weather Lab used to report weather on location. They were filmed and featured on last Saturday morning's news segment. So if you did not see it, um, Google it. <laughs> Ryerson Elementary School celebrated Earth Day by hosting their very first book swap. The Ryerson School's green team student leaders synergized as a group and dedicated, decided to host a collection of old and unwanted books for a school-wide swap. On Thursday, April 20th, all students had the opportunity to choose a book that was donated to the swap to take home and call their own. Ryerson students were able to enjoy their new books after a morning and read um, in classrooms, hallways, and throughout the school building. Schuyler Colfax Middle School students promoted their environmental efforts in the sixth grade seminar course by working on Arbor Day projects that will culminate in a tree planting with the support of one of our local landscapers. The students at Wayne Hills and Wayne Valley High School celebrated Makers Month with a spectacular Makers Day week events. Students enjoyed participating in the many makerspace activities, including rock painting, working with 3D pens, constructing digital art on tablets, jewelry making, Lego building, sewing projects, clay creations, knitting, 3D projects, and so much more. This was an exciting and engaging way to kickstart our high school students' access to thinking outside the box using a makerspace. Wayne Valley hosted its third annual job fair for students on April 20th. Employers around Wayne were on site to recruit for part-time and seasonal jobs. Students were invited to bring a copy of their resume to their favorite, to the, to the fair to provide to employers. And um, again, we like to thank all of our community partners for always participating and helping our students. On Sunday, May 7th, a team from Wayne schools will participate in the Cool School Challenge. This inclusive program was established to have unified champion schools participate in the Lincoln Tunnel Challenge 5K while raising funds and awareness for Special Olympics New Jersey. We're so proud of our students and families who will be participating in this event and cannot wait to see pictures and hear more about the day. The Stars and Unified Club Sports are hosting a spring fling on Saturday, April 29th at Anthony Wayne Middle School. The event will take place between 10 and 12 a.m. for elementary students and secondary students will take place from 1 to 3 p.m. There will be a DJ, games, crafts, and more. We hope to see many people there. I'm excited to share that the Wayne Hills High School was recently ranked in the 2023 Niche Report as number three public school in the state and number seven overall for athletics. The Wayne Hills 
NJSIAA Scholar Athlete of the Year recipient is Willie, Lily Weltman. Congratulations. And the Passaic County Coaches Association Scholar Athletes of the Year are John Sees for football, wrestling, and lacrosse, and Shannon Ty for basketball, softball, softball and flag football. And at Wayne Valley, the Wayne Valley NJSIAA AA Scholar Athlete of the Year recipient is Winston Calvo. Passaic County Coaches Association, Wayne Valley Scholar Athletes of the Year are Alex Shuplain for football, ice hockey, and lacrosse, and Jessica Lee for soccer, basketball, and lacrosse. Congratulations to all of our student winners. And for the HIB report, I'm reporting the following data related to harassment, intimidation, and bullying incidents in the Wayne Township Public School District. There have been 15 incidents of HIVs investigated since my last report, and seven of those cases were deemed to meet the criteria of an HIV incident. And this concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Reichman. We'll move on to our student representatives. Catherine? This week, Wayne Valley is gearing up for our renowned SDA performances. Entire hallways have been decorated with posters supporting Team Blue or Team White in anticipation of the competition. The show dates are April 27th, 28th, and 29th, and the winners will, will be announced on the 29th. Good luck to both teams. On April 20th, Valley hosted our third job fair. Employers from a variety of fields set up tables in the main gym and presented information on seasonal and part-time jobs for students during their lunch period. The same day, Wayne Valley counselors hosted a future planning night to give students and parents an opportunity to learn about SAT and ACT reporting, college planning, letters of recommendation, types of college applications, a timeline of steps to take during the application process, and other post high school options. The counselors gave a Zoom presentation to all that were able to attend. Wayne Valley counselors also hosted their sixth annual college panel this month. Representatives from Michigan State University, George Washington University, Ramapo College, Hobart and William Smith Colleges, and Florida Atlantic University came to speak on the panel. Over 50 parents and students participated in the event, which was hosted both virtually and in person. Bye. Seniors in the television production class had the amazing opportunity to get a real life lesson in TV production at William Patterson University. Students were able to use the university's state-of-the-art equipment to sharpen their filmmaking skills, and experienced professionals came in to give the students valuable knowledge of the industry. Representatives from our school newspaper, Spoke Signals, participated in a swap with journalism students from Wayne Hills. Newspaper editors Gina LaRusso and Mia Ternan guided Hills students Emily Sawyer and Trisha Vias through a school day at Wayne Valley. Then the writers switched places, with Valley students accompanying Hills students on their school days. Afterwards, all four students wrote articles for their respective newspapers about the experience. Wayne Valley hosted a community wellness fair for any Wayne resident to attend on the evening of March 29th. The event focused on self-care and wellness. Over 30 booths were prepared with representatives from both student-led and outside organizations, such as Tri-County Behavioral Care, Wayne Alliance, New Pathways, Medallion Chiropractic, Wayne Valley DECA, our chapter of the National Art Honor Society, Wayne Valley Triam, and Valley Counselors. Congratulations to Daniela and Dominico for earning her 300th save as the goalie of Wayne Valley Girls Lacrosse. The same game she made her 300th save, Valley beat Indian Hills 10 to 9 points. Congratulations to the boys' spring track team for becoming the large school's Passaic County Relay champions. The boys placed first in the intermediate hurdles event, the 4x800 meter relay, the distance medley, the long jump event, and the shot put event. The boys are also undefeated in their dual meet season with a 5 to 0 record to be league champions. Spring track athlete Christian Mercado was up for North Jersey Track Performer of the Week with his wins in the long jump event and triple jump event. He participated in the 4 by 400 meter relay that led Valley to victory over Wayne Hills in a dual meet and in the sprint medley relay that pushed the boys to the top in the Passaic County relays. Lastly, Wayne Valley Theater did a magnificent rendition of Broadway's Little Women. The shows happened on April 14th, 15th, and 16th. Congratulations to the cast and crew for another successful musical. Thank you. Thank you, Ramsey. Good evening. The Wayne Hills Millennia Winter Guard is approaching the end of their 2023 season in grand style. The Guard won first place in the Scholastic AA Division at the Elizabeth High School competition on April 1st. The Guard won their division again two weeks later at the Brick Memorial High School Guard competition. The Wayne Hills Symphonic Band attended the NJMSA Region 1 Concert Band Festival 
on Tuesday, March 21st, and we are proud to say they were one of only a few groups to receive a gold rating for their performance. The ensemble also earned the award for best brass on the day. This year, our ninth grade French one and rich students are participating in a French pen pal exchange with students from College Pablo Picasso and Saint Etienne de Rouvre in Normandy, France. Students have received and responded to letters from students their age in France who are studying English. All, all letters are sent by airmail through the post and written in both languages. Students have exchanged cultural information about TV shows, music, sports, and other activities they enjoy. Wayne Hills High School celebrated, celebrated Makers Month with a spectacular Makers Day event on March 24th and subsequent Maker Days in the library. Thanks to New Jersey's STEM Pathways mini grant and their library budget, they were able to give over 750 students access to makerspace activities, including bracelet making, breaded, a, a beaded jewelry making, Lego building, origami paper design, sewing projects, knitting projects, 3D printer projects, sublimation printing, Cree cut design logos for apparel, and more. Mrs. Caldwell is finding ways to incorporate these new tools into their curriculum in the future and will be coming back to use the makerspace for their lessons and creative assessments. Wayne Hills High School is also excited that this event was able to kickstart their students' access to thinking outside the box using a makerspace and look forward to continuing to spark creativity in the future. From April 24th to April 28th, Wayne Hills is celebrating the 25th annual Environmental Awareness Week and observing the 53rd anniversary of Earth Day. Teachers were invited to plan lessons during the special week that integrate an environmental theme to promote a greater awareness and sensitivity about local and global ecological issues that endanger our planet's resources and our human family. Moreover, teachers in the science department offered students the opportunity to participate in an environmental poster contest from which winners were selected by faculty vote. In the language arts department, students did participate by writing environmental poetry, and students in the technology education department got involved through an environmental photography contest. Many thanks are, are, are extended to all in our local and school community who participated and supported this effort to raise environmental awareness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Moffat, revisions to the agenda, please. Yes, I have a couple tonight. First, under T, Emergent Human Resources, T3, Approval of Revised Items. We'll revise number eight, Allison, I'll spell the last name, V-A-N-S-C-H-A-I-K. We're changing the school from Wayne Valley to Wayne Hills. Number nine, Margaret Malzone, M-A-L-Z-O-N-E, change school from Wayne Valley to Wayne Hills. Moving on to X, Emergent Legal, we'll be adding two tonight. The first one is an approval of a HIB determination. Recommended action reads as follows. Resolve that the board reject the superintendent's decision on HIB case 158-2022-2023 following appeal as required by NJSA 18A colon 37-15 parentheses B parentheses 6 parentheses E. The second one that's being added to the agenda is an approval of contract. The recommended action reads as follows. Resolve that the board authorizes the business administrator, board secretary to engage with Sobel, Kahn, and Cannon, LLP, for legal and investigative services in the amount not to exceed $6,600. That concludes the changes to tonight's agenda. Thank you. At this time, this portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment on agenda items only. Residents are asked to state their name, address, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to three minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at a subsequent meeting under old business. Do I have a mover? So moved. Mr. Kazan, Mr. Battersfield. 
Anyone from the public wishing to speak on agenda items? Seeing no one, uh, I make a motion to close the public portion. Second. Second. Mr. Bad Mr. Sarkos, Mr. Batterfield. This evening, the Facilities and Transportation Committee met with myself, Mr. Prasakos, Mr. Battershill, Administrators Lauren Tibbetts, Peter Romaine, Richard Skibitsky, and William Moffat. We discussed items on tonight's agenda. Uh, notably, the one where we're submitting a grant is for a windmill-powered lighting project at Anthony Wayne Middle School which will have um, an educational component, which I find interesting. Um, the children will be able to see how much energy is being generated and how the whole windmill project works. Um, and hopefully we'll be getting the grant money to pay for that. We went over the minutes. Uh, they were approved as written or moved forward. And we discussed our upcoming committee meeting schedule because of the large amount of work going on in the board offices we're going to have to do some Jenga with <laughs> our uh, meeting locations and uh, times and days um, Lafayette uh, we have a new security tech um, employee and uh, he's already hard at work saving us money from using outside contractors and dealing with our uh, cold spots in our PA system there and that's all been taken care of um, operations uh, we talked about the monumental amount of work uh, moving the administrators as many as we could uh, to the Preakness school because we're had to uh, vacate uh, our board offices the demo is underway and the wiring and the ceiling tiles and everything is being removed um, this is a big job and it's going to go on for several months um, we talked about the Valley. Ah, there was an audio installed in the Wayne Valley uh, Auditorium. Um, that project is completed. We talked about the voice over IP system and the new 911 overlay, and that will be um, an added uh, bonus for security throughout our district. We discussed ongoing projects for the summer, next generation science labs at Wayne Hills High School the much needed restroom renovations at three of the schools where we're basically cutting through administrator's office and uh, sharing bathrooms uh, where there's one we need more for uh, our staff um, we discussed uh, the bid opening on what are we opening the bid on oh the restrooms so that that bid is coming soon and that'll be a summer project um, we've had some tree issue reports from the residents those are all being considered the ones that are the worst obviously and um, it, dangerous in any way shape or form will be dealt with immediately um, Hills guidance project uh, the Hills guidance office has a HVAC uh, air conditioning situation that's on the, the list to be repaired and uh, currently they're using a generator and a spot cooler uh, to deal with that until the work can be done in the summer let's see then we moved on to transportation uh, we discussed the resolutions on the agenda for that uh, finally after uh, the problem with uh, come on supply supply chain <laughs> we're receiving vehicles we ordered two years ago uh, and the most um, good news is we developed uh, we've mentioned this in the past our own in-house training for CDL which uh, our uh, director runs and we now have approved 11 drivers that is fantastic because every other school district is scrambling for drivers and we're basically creating our own um, we talked about software upgrades that are being explored for the Cove um, there are going to be 18 bus routes that have to be um, set up for the extended school year for our special needs students through Northern Regional. The Wayne Fire Department came and uh, gave professional development basically to all of our employees that ride buses on how to use the fire extinguishers and uh, make sure that they're ready for any sort of emergency, which was fantastic and the employees enjoyed it and they felt like they learned quite a bit from our local fire department and thank you to them um, 
the Cove, the generator that we ordered for them is currently on site and that will need to be hooked up. Uh, preschool enrollment is creating busing challenges um, and we're worried about some pending legislation which we'll get into if it uh, moves forward. We did finally get a new mechanic and working out wonderfully. Another point of good news, the motor vehicle inspections, day five, 81 buses. Out of 81 buses, 73 have already passed. Most school districts, 70% uh, of them fail in the first go round. We, we have a, a much higher rate of uh, success and uh, none of them were failed for emissions. So um, that's ongoing. We discussed the flooding locations because we have to have certain areas of towns occasionally and thankfully it hasn't been as bad as it was in the past move, but uh, we really only need to move about 40% of the fleet, but I won't say where they're going. Nobody needs to know that. Uh, Schuyler Colfax Middle School received a certification as an uh, Arbor Day Treep Campus. And uh, we discussed um, some other uh, community concerns. I'll leave it at that and um, more to come on those. That's my report. Oh, and the termites have been dealt with at Lafayette. <laughs> Thank you. Any other committees? Um, personnel committee met this evening. Uh, myself, uh, Mr. Patel, uh, Mrs. Clark, Mrs. Reichman. Um, we reviewed the minutes of our previous meeting and all agenda items for tonight. Uh, we had conversations about personnel and also a couple um, policy issues and job descriptions. That's it. Um, at this time, the mover for the agenda. I'll move the entire agenda. I'm sorry. Move to uh, vote on the entire agenda. Mrs. Kazan? Second. Mr. Giordano, any questions? Any discussion? Roll call, Mr. Martha. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Mrs. Kazan? Yes. Mrs. Rigoloso? Yes. Mr. Battershill? Yes. Mr. Prasakos? Abstain on X1, yes, on everything else. And Mr. Pavlak? Yes. Motion carries. We have retirements. Mrs. Rigoloso? Okay, I'm honored to talk about Brian Reinhardt. Mr. Brian Reinhardt is com uh, completing 24 years teaching in the science department at Wayne Hills. Mr. Reinhardt consistently maintained high standards for his students with reasonable and productive expectations. He is a he is competent and dedicated educator. Although his main focus has been in teaching environmental science, he also taught bio in his early years here. Mr. Reinhardt is appreciated for his time and efforts in maintaining an active and constructive classroom as he applied updated pedagogical, uh, pedagog what am, pedagogical knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, I'm sorry, and strategies that added to the success of his teaching. He has always been a cooperative, collaborative, and supportive member of the science department. His interests have continuously revolved around what is best for his students. We wish him a healthy and happy retirement, and we thank him for his service and contributions to Wayne Hills. I have one more, Tracy Winand, and, and she's been a teacher at Pines Lake Elementary School for the past 25 years in second and third grade. As a veteran teacher, she is a mentor for new teachers and a valuable part of the Pines Lake team. She always fights for the best interests of her students and supports them in and out of the classroom. She frequently cheers her students on at games and attends their performances. She helped develop a partnership with Apple to enhance technology integration for students, allowing them to bring their research projects to life. She had three children learn and grow in the WTPS and graduate from Wayne Valley. She has always been very active in the Wayne community by volunteering as a parent. She ran the Student Dance Association for many years, even after her daughter graduated. Her legacy will live on through her son, Michael, who is also an elementary teacher. She will be greatly missed by the entire Pines Lake community. Mr. Prasakos. Liz Collins. 
Mrs. Collins started teaching in Wayne Township Public Schools in 2002 as a traveling physical education teacher working in five schools. In 2005, Mrs. Collins was assigned as the PE teacher at Packenack School. Beth has a long history with Packenack as her five children all attended Packenack School, GW, and Wayne Valley High School. Mrs. Collins was very active as a volunteer at Packenack School for 15 years prior to becoming a district employee. During her tenure at Packenack Beth, Beth strived to imbue good sportsmanship in all the students. This has had a lasting impact on the culture and climate of the school. Beth has led by example by being the consummate team player. She will be missed by all the Packenack School community. We congratulate Beth on her well-earned retirement. And Cynthia Carey. We are grateful to Mrs. Cynthia Carey, dedicated speech and language therapist who helped us open the Preakness Early Childhood Center amid the pandemic in September 2020. During her tenure with the Wayne Public Schools, Cynthia has always put the children first in all that she does and her commitment to the students and families she supports and serves in her roles as a speech and language therapist and formerly as a child study team member. Serving the community in both facets allowed Cynthia to engage various lenses in her work with children and advocating for our youngest learners. Cynthia's dedication to her colleagues, as well as the field of early childhood education, specifically language development, shines through in all that she does, leaving a positive impact on every person she touches. We wish Cynthia the best in retirement. Mrs. Kazan. Marie Motisi. We are very excited to celebrate the amazing Mrs. Marie Motisi as she retires at the end of this school year. Mrs. Motisi has served in education for 34 years. She came to Wayne in 1994 after working in Butler as secretary to the director of special services. In Wayne Public Schools, she has worked in special services, human resources, and the superintendent's office before coming to Randall Carter Elementary five years ago as the school secretary. Mrs. Motisi demonstrates care and love for the staff, students, and families that she supports every day. She takes great pride in her work and puts the needs of students first. This is seen by the large number of students who pop into the front office each morning to tell Mrs. Motisi good morning, to stop in for a hug, or to share a story about something fun they did over the weekend. The entire Randall Carter family wishes Mrs. Motisi all the best as she retires this June and can't wait to hear about all her new adventures. She'll most certainly be missed. Next, Abitisam Bibi Brook. Bibi retired from the Transportation Department on April 15th, 2023. Bibi began her career as a van aide in April 2015. Over the course of her eight years of service to the Wayne Public Schools, she has been dedicated to assist, assisting students with special needs every day as they ride to and from school. She always made herself available to cover and go on any route, no questions asked. Bibi's loving and nurturing attitude was evident daily as she helped, guided, and watched over her students. If a substitute driver needed to cover the run, they would always count on Bibi to help them along the way. We thank her for her service. May her retirement allow the time to do the things she loves and avoid the things she doesn't like to do. Don't we all? Bibi will be missed, but never forgotten. May the next phase of her life bring all that she seeks and even more happiness. Good Ms. luck to all our retirees. Mr. Giordano. Thank you. Mine is for the legend Dennis Carroll. Dennis Carroll is a teacher, advisor, mentor, and friend. Dennis has served the Wayne Valley community for over 25 years. Why did he choose a career in education? For a natural teacher like Mr. Carroll, the answer is actually very simple, teach the kids. He has often felt, excuse me, he has often said that he feels more effective and at ease in room 238 than nearly anywhere else in the world. It is with the students that Dennis found his daily inspiration and is in the classroom where he has made his greatest impact. Dennis is direct, honest, unapologetic expression of his unwavering passion for education, history, government, politics, and his students, his colleagues, and in life in general has truly profound influence at Wayne Valley. He has long been involved in many aspects of our school's student government. His advisory roles, excuse me, in the Honor Society, junior statesmen, and student council have provided decades of mentorship to Valley students. 
Throughout, Dennis has always encouraged students to collaborate, and he's fostered a positive learning environment for all. Dennis has been a strong advocate for his colleagues during his career. One of the ways he's accomplished this is through his advocacy as a union leader. In fact, he's the longest serving officer in the Wayne Education Association, and his perspective will be sorely missed. Dennis, your experience as an educator, a union representative, and advocacy for education was invaluable to the Wayne Valley community. Your experience as an educator, your joy of teaching, and your willingness to find solutions was invaluable to Wayne Valley. And as a fellow union member, good luck, Dennis. You deserve this retirement. Mr. Battersfield. Daria Grossman has been a power professional for the Wayne Public Township Schools for 16 years. During her tenure, she has served in the capacity of a one-on-one -on -one shared and classroom paraprofessional, whether working directly with an individual student or part of a program working with more than one student, Mrs. Grossman puts students first and treats all with kindness and respect. Ms. Grossman has always worked collaboratively with staff, never hesitating to adapt to change to needs of the building or program. As Ms. Grossman prepares for the next chapter, she will be missed by colleagues, teachers, family, and most importantly, students. We would like to thank Ms. Grossman for her contributions to Wayne Valley High School and all of the schools and programs she has assisted throughout the years. We wish you the best in the future endeavors and much enjoyment in your retirement. Kirsten Gallo started her teaching career in Wayne Township in September of 2004 and has worked at APT for her entire time here in the district. She has taught second and third grade as well as demonstrated her flexibility and adaptability during the 2020 to 21 school year where she worked remotely with students from many different elementary schools who were learning from home. Her warm and caring demeanor resonates with her students of past and present. In addition to her student-centered classroom environment, her students would show significant academic and social and emotional growth under her guidance. We salute you and appreciate her years of dedication and service to the students, families, and staff members here at AP Tohoon. Congratulations on your well-deserved retirement, and she will be missed. And congratulations to all the retirees. Thank you, Mr. Battersfield. Uh, lastly, I have Beverly Celadine. Beverly Celadine ties to Wayne Township are deep-rooted. She's a former alumni of Schuyler Colfax Middle School and Wayne Hills High School, where she met her husband. Bev started her career as a nurse, working in a critical care unit in a hospital, eventually working into nursing administration. She and her husband got married and loved Wayne so much they decided to raise their family in the town. When their family grew and her children started elementary school, Bev decided to return to college to achieve her certification as a school nurse and her certification as a health education teacher. One, once completed, Beverly started her school nursing career in Patterson when a spot opened up in the Wayne School District in September of 1997, it was an easy decision to transition thus starting her long career in Wayne Township. Her first stop was Tunis Day Elementary School, and then she moved on to George Washington Middle School, serving as school nurse. When Anthony Wayne Middle School was opened in 2005, she transferred into a new position as the health specialist, where she remained teaching health classes in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Beverly has also been an active member in the Wayne Education Association, serving as a union representative for Anthony Wayne Middle School. Committed to supporting all her students in the Wayne Schools, she has been a member of the Wayne School Scholarship and Honors Committee since 2006. Mrs. Celadine is a consummate professional. She is truly dedicated to her profession and to Anthony Wayne, always putting students first, taking their health education extremely serious, but always being one to partake in her in fun. Her competitive spirit comes out when participates in different activities during Spirit Week, whether it's a sing-along or dress-up day. Bev has always built a long-lasting relationship with her colleagues and is an integral member of the Anthony Wayne family. She is admired by all and will be greatly missed. We wish Bev much happiness as she starts the next chapter of her life, spending time with her family and friends, volunteering and enjoying the Jersey Shore. Congratulations, Bev, on completing your amazing career 
and thank you for the many years of hard work and dedication and education. On a personal note, I've known Mrs. Celadine for a good number of years. Um, I worked with her before getting on the board uh, with drug and alcohol program and for the middle school and actually even spoke in some of her classes. Um, Bev was always the true professional and always someone the students loved. Uh, I know my two daughters went there and they both had her and they still talk about her today. Bev, thank you. And to all our retirees, thank you for your time, service, and dedication to the Wayne School District because it is because of you that makes this district what it is. Thank you. If our student reps could read the donations, I'm sorry, I've passed that over. My fault, I bet. We have one donation from uh, to Pines Lake Elementary from Pines Lake PTO, and this donation is to be used to purchase a bottle filling station for the cafeteria. The donation amount is $1,385.90. Thank you. Thank you. This portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment on any topic, residents or state their name, address, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to five minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. Board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at a subsequent meeting under old business. Do I have a mover? Second. Mrs. Kazan, Mr. Battersfield. Anyone from the public wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I move to close. Mr. Giordano. Second. Mrs. Rigoloso. Any old business? I uh, just wanted to see if there's an update on the Citizen Action Committee. Uh, we will have an update on that at the next meeting. Any new business? Board member comments? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion second. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>